Alright, today I have something special to share with you guys. This is a massive number logic build that I've been working on for weeks. I mean, just look at all this spaghetti. Spaghetti. This was such a pain in the butt to actually connect this all. Like my, I can't even see the parts behind it. And while all these connections took hours and hours to actually connect to the right places, this isn't actually the reason why I've been working on this for weeks. You see, this was inspired by a recent video where I built Wordle in Scrap Mechanic. So I was thinking to myself, Wordle is a game based on letters. So let's try to make one based on numbers. And my first thought was Sudoku. But it turns out that building a working Sudoku game in Scrap Mechanic is a lot more complicated than I originally thought. The actual logic behind a Sudoku game isn't that complicated. I think everybody already knows how to play Sudoku, it's just putting the numbers 1 through 9 in a grid pattern. And there can't be two of the same numbers in any row, column, or 3x3 three three area. The complicated part was that I needed to create a valid Sudoku grid for people to play. So this isn't even a Sudoku game, it's just the logic needed to generate a valid Sudoku board. And the part that took me weeks to figure out was that I tried all different kinds of ways of doing this. The first thing that I tried was to skip straight to the end and try to generate a Sudoku game ready to play with only some of the areas filled out, leaving some empty spots for the player to actually fill out and play Sudoku. So to do that, I would choose a random number between 2 and 7, and that would be the number of digits that I would fill out for a 3x3 three three area, making sure that none of those numbers conflicted with each other. This would theoretically create a valid Sudoku game ready to play. I thought that this would work, and it would be a pretty easy thing to do. As a matter of fact, it was pretty easy, since there weren't that many numbers to check with one another. But the problem with this design was that I wasn't able to verify if it actually created a valid Sudoku game. What I created worked just fine, and it did exactly what I programmed it to do. The problem was that it was possible to create a game that was impossible to complete. So with this first design, it happened with pretty much every grid that it tried to generate. So what I tried next was to use a random number generator for each and every digit. And I focused on the rows this time. So I created a 9 digit row of random numbers 1 through 9, that just sort of shuffled around which numbers they were. My thinking was that if I could do this just once, then it should be easy enough to do this 8 more times underneath this one. And that should theoretically create a valid Sudoku board. The problem with that was, well, I, I never finished it because I realized that I would also have to check the columns as well. And these are the number checks for the 4 first columns as well. See, I have the checks for all the rows, and this was me starting to build the checks for the columns, but it just got really, really messy with the connections. Not that that really mattered in the end anyway. And checking the rows and columns wasn't too bad, but it also had this problem where it would conflict with itself. A lot of the time it would just get stuck in a loop where there wasn't a solution to how it started. Really, I just made the assumption that if the rows and columns were fine, then the 3x3 three three groups would somehow work out just fine too. It's actually able to find a lot of number arrangements that have no conflicts with the rows or columns. But there were a lot of conflicts in the 3x3 three three groups, I didn't actually realize this was a possibility until I made it in Scrap Mechanic and watched it create a Sudoku grid with two 9s in the same spot. Or you can see in this example, there's three 5s in the first 3x3 three three group. And the next one has two 3s and two 7s. The next one has two 6s, two 2s, and two 8s. That's like totally invalid for a Sudoku game. So if I really wanted to create a valid Sudoku game generator, I couldn't take any shortcuts and I had to scrap these old designs entirely and try to come up with something new. Another design I came up with was just massive. It's basically the same thing where each digit was just randomly generated, but this time it takes everything into account. Here it is, it lags my game a little bit, but it is a massive. Another one with a lot of spag heady. And connecting this was also a pain in the butt. It's basically the same thing where each digit is randomly generated, leaving some empty spaces. So each 3x3 three three space has somewhere between 2 and 7 digits filled out already, but the rest is empty. Except this time, it takes everything into account. So it checks the 3x3 three three area to make sure there's no duplicates. It has a vertical check so that every column has no conflicts, and if it does have a conflict, it'll regenerate the 3x3 three three group that has a conflict. And then there's also horizontal checks over here to make sure that none of the rows conflict with each other as well. And then over here you can see this is the, uh, this is like sort of the governing script where you can start the system, and it's supposed to write it into memory, like this. And you might have actually seen a sneak peek of this blueprint uh, in a previous video or live stream. But this also wasn't good enough. Not only did my game lag from the sheer amount of logic parts trying to do something every tick, so while it partially created some valid Sudoku games, there was a chance that something went wrong and it would give an impossible Sudoku game. As a matter of fact, 
this Sudoku game here still looks valid. It still looks like a game that you could play. But I encourage you guys to screenshot this and play it to see if you can actually complete it. Because just like the other ones, this blueprint does exactly what I programmed it to do, but it's not necessarily a valid Sudoku game. Which is a weird thing to think about because you would think, you know, with all the empty spaces there, that it would still be valid and you could complete it. But that's not the case. So that's where this final design comes into play. Cutting out all of the shortcuts that I tried to take and giving the logic the time that it needs to do this properly, this design definitely takes a lot longer where it can take up to 10 minutes from start to finish. But this generates the numbers one by one, making sure each and every digit will produce a valid Sudoku game. So there's no empty spaces in this one. This generates a full Sudoku board. I took on this challenge of trying to build Sudoku without really knowing if it was even possible. But I managed to find a design that works within the limits of Scrap Mechanic at the cost of doing it a little slower than I would have liked it to. The way that it works is back here I have the governing script, which is basically a counter block that will count from 0 to 100 and an entire grid of logic gates that will check what the individual digits of the counter block is. So the first digit of the number will say which column to work on, and the second digit will say which row to work on. It's basically a giant grid selector that uses the digits of a counter block to choose its next grid square. But a Sudoku grid is 9x9, which is only 81 digits to create. So I made the grid selector completely ignore zeros. Every time the counter has a zero in it, it will skip to the next number, whatever that number is. So the first 0 to 9 values, the second digit is 0, and it's all skipped until it gets to 10. But that also has a 0 in it, so it skips straight to 11. The numbers 11 through 19 represent row 1, columns 1 through 9. Once it counts up to 20, well that has a 0 in that number, so it skips straight to 21, which is row 2, column 1. And this pattern will repeat of skipping the numbers with any 0 in it until it reaches 99, the ninth row, ninth column. So this is how I made a pattern that will go through each digit in a Sudoku board, one by one. It's important to note that there are lots of other ways of doing the exact same thing. Making a grid selector isn't something new, and it's often done in plain old vanilla logic gates all the time. But the reason why I did it this way was because I made use of the values of the counter block in other ways. For example, when the third digit of the counter reaches 1, as in the counter has counted up to 100, then we know that it has finished generating a valid Sudoku board, with that third digit place value being a 0 or a 1. We can always check that. So let's move on to the next section. Here you can see a random number generator that's just going wild, it's just constantly generating a random number, and it's connected to, uh, if you can see, it's connected to all of these memory panels over here. So depending on which slot we're on, that's the memory panel that we're going to be writing into. When you turn this thing on and it starts going through all the slots, the random number generator will keep randomizing and writing into this memory panel, entering in the number that it generated. If it's a valid number, it moves on to the next slot. If it's not a valid number, it will stay on that slot, constantly rolling the dice until it gets a valid number. And this is the basics of how this thing works. So over here, this huge section of math blocks with all the checks, this is where the logic for a valid Sudoku grid is and that information is contained with how it was wired together. So each individual slot is constantly trying random numbers over and over, and it will check all the necessary conditions based on Sudoku rules to see if it was a valid number or not. If all the conditions were met and the logic gate at the end lights up, then it ticks the counter block and we move over to the next slot. So starting with the top left, the very first slot doesn't have any checks, since the grid is completely empty anyway, it just needs to choose a random number from 1 to 9. From there, it just goes from left to right, down the slots, just like the grid selector does. And as it goes down, more and more checks are needed against the numbers that have already been chosen above it. That is until it gets to the very last row. You might notice that the last row has fewer checks than the ones above it. And that's because on the ninth row, we already have eight numbers in the column, so we already know the ninth number, the random number generator just has to get lucky and write it in. There is some extra logic that will help things to go a little bit more smoothly. For example, this creation still has the possibility of creating an invalid Sudoku grid, and it will get stuck trying to fill in the last couple of digits of any row. So to counteract this, there is a timer that gets reset every time the system moves over to a new slot, and it counts down for 15 seconds for each slot. If a single slot takes longer than 15 seconds to fill in, then the entire row gets reset to start over and try again from that row. And that's done with a tick button up here to check which row that we're on, and that's going to let us know which row of memory panels to reset. And that also gives us the information on how to set the main counter block back to that position. 
So this is part of the reason why I think this system takes much longer than my previous designs, but it takes the time that it needs to make sure that the grid is actually valid. And funny enough, it ends up being much fewer parts in the end too. The trade-off here was the very specific ways that the checks were being done, and the difficulty in connecting them all. Like, holy moly, actually connecting this stuff is very, very difficult. It, it, uh, doing it, oh my gosh, it was just, you can't see, you can't see past all the blue spaghetti. But from there, it's all really simple stuff, it's just a main switch to start the whole system, and a black button to reset the grid if you wanted to start over at any point, as well as a timer and a progress meter. Once the system is finished creating a valid Sudoku board, it will write the board over here into new memory panels, and detach the board ready to be used with a creation that actually lets you play the Sudoku game. This basically just spits out the answer key that it generated. Originally, what I wanted to do was to make a playable Sudoku game in Scrap Mechanic, and I ended up getting so sidetracked in making a generator to make valid Sudoku grids in the game. In hindsight, I just should have done what I did with the Wordle game, and save a few valid games into some memory slots, and have several games for you to choose from of varying difficulty. But that wouldn't be very many games, and I wanted to create something sort of like the apps that you can get on your phone, where they seem to have an endless amount of games that you can play. So that's all that's left is to make the actual gameplay part of Sudoku. And this is what I want to challenge you guys to make. Something that will accept a Sudoku grid of numbers, using smart sensors in color mode. Because I can attach RGB blocks to these numbers, and to the human eye, they're all going to look very black, like very dark, so... So you're going to have a hard time discerning which number is which, but the smart sensor will be able to register it, and that's going to make it very easy to just weld on any game, anytime. You can even switch out the board for another one, the smart sensors will pick it up, and you won't have to do any connections. So any Sudoku game that is generated can be very easily welded onto it. They don't even have to be welded onto it, they can just be placed right in front of the sensors, and replaced at any time with another one. It also needs to have a seat for the player to use, with buttons 1 through 9 to be how players enter in the numbers, and a grid selector for the player to say which spot in the grid they are entering the number into. You could make that grid selector a number of ways, like the player controlling which slot they're on with WASD controls. Or if you wanted to get really ambitious, you could use the Orient block, tracking the player's camera to see which spot the player is looking at. And that's really my challenge for you guys, is to try to build a way to actually play these Sudoku grids, generated by this thing. Of course, it needs some way to actually make the game itself by hiding some of the answer from the players, and preventing the players from changing the spots that are shown. Difficulty settings shouldn't be too complicated, and it just comes down to how many digits you show to the player initially. So I would think that the most difficult Sudoku games that you can play on your phone show like a minimum of 17 places, and the easier games show upwards of 36 places. You can get fancy with it too to make all kinds of extra features like a timer, or a verification thing. You know, something that gives like a simple yes or no answer if the player wants to know if they got something wrong while they are playing. So yeah, that's my challenge to the community, is to make a playable Sudoku game given a set of RGB blocks with the answers. Of course, I'll be putting this up on the workshop for you guys to check out, and if you find ways to improve it, please do. I took on this challenge for a while without even knowing if it was possible, but now I'm wondering how much faster it could be made, or if there are other ways of even doing this. So the link's gonna be in the description for you guys to check out. I think this is probably the biggest logic project I've taken on so far, and I'm exhausted from working within the game's limitations trying to get this to work. Just the sheer amount of connections this took. It's so much. So you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. Big thanks to my channel members for supporting what I do, and all of you guys for liking and sharing videos like this one. So that's all for now, and I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.